Your life is a book. Everything you do goes into a chapter. How do you want that book to end? You want to have a book that people love to read over and over again because they can't believe how you did it, how you laid it all out. Oh my God, so much in here. So many historic moments in this book. So many pictures, so many freeze frames, so many remember the times are in this book. Kev. Kev. The hell? Got all these fake ass sets. Kev. Kevin. Kev. Oh, Jesus Christ. I need this. This is how, this is how you getting it in, huh, Kev? Kev! Kevin! What up, big? Oh, shit, Manir. What's up, baby? Oh, man, you know how to turn this on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right Let me get a massage while boom, boom, before boom. Kevin come in here, man. You looking for Kev? Yeah. Kevin's over on stage one. You're on stage two. Stage one? Yeah. Hold on, man. It's different. <sighs> Do you have one of these over at stage? So where am I at now? You're at stage two. And where is stage? Stage oh. one. Are you, you, dude, you, how this dude got all this over here? So am I going this way, or what's the best way to get over to the next day? Jesus Christ, man. This when you know people got too much, all this damn space over here. Fake ass offices over here. We could have just did it right here. Look who showed up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Kevin Hart. Yes, sir. Thank you for sitting down with me. Thank man. you, brother. You know, and I appreciate it, bro. Like. We had to do this, you know? Yes. Um, and the reason why I say we had to, I can only take so many of your phone calls, like, Big, you know, we need to sit down again. Big, I've, I've made it. I need, to, I need to come back to my, where it all started at, my, my stepping stone. You know, I need, to, I need to come and sit with you. I don't win so Hollywood yeah. that I have to come back yeah. and talk with you, Big, because you ground me. Yeah. Remember that conversation? I actually, I actually remember a different conversation. I remember, uh, I remember mm -hmm. really being the complete opposite of that. Mm -hmm. I remember, I remember you saying. But you're an actor. Well, okay, go ahead. That that I am. Mm -hmm. But I remember when you said, "Hey, Kev, dude, it's at a point where I I don't have anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I, I've hit rock bottom. Rock bottom. Yeah, I say rock bottom. And and me being at the bottom. This is kind of tacky, but go ahead. Well, I'm just saying, okay. and me being at the bottom, the best way to go to the to top. top is to get somebody on top. Mm -hmm. With that being said, Kev, yeah, give can me Jay -Z. you grab my hand? Oh, oh okay, yeah. And, can I, you, and can... I said, brother, yes. brother, the real question is, does a snail have a shell? If you think about that, mm -hmm. you're gonna come out with a real profound answer. Does a answer snail yes. have a shell, yes. It means yes. that I will forever be your shell. Forever. Ah, because I move slow in my career. Not I, as fast paced. I didn't say it. Where I should be. I didn't say it. Okay, we've, we've sat down a lot. A lot. And we've had a chance to sit on air, and it's been many years of us having great conversations on yes. air. So what I wanted to do with you this time, man, is kind of take you out of the studio. Okay. And do something with you just off air. Okay. And we've had, we built a lot of moments. Yeah. A lot of memories that I'm pretty sure are some of your best moments of your life. Uh, but now I want to I wanna speak to Kevin Hart. And Kev, first off, man, when you, when you look, there's, look, there's so many things about Kevin. When did Kevin Hart know he was funny? When did Kevin Hart know it was funny? Uh, that's out the gate. Mm -hmm. I was never not funny. Mm -hmm. I was never not a personable uh, individual. I was never a guy that struggled to get laughs mm -hmm. or to Is have that a good early time. on, like for as long as you can remember? That's long. That's, that's me, age. Three, so three, it wasn't an three, aha nine. where it was like at the age of that's when nah, I it was. I was always the silly kid. I was all you know what it was. I always wanted to be the center of attention. Mm -hmm. I love that. I Did love that. Did anybody ever tell you to not be the center of attention? Like you, you know how it's not going to work. You're a class clown. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my mom really heavy on sit your ass down, shut up, do what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You know she was extremely uh, strict in that world, but. On the flip side, she also embraced 
the personality that her child had. Mm -hmm. She was also very big on showing me the love for the love that I received. Mm -hmm. People like to be around you. People gravitate towards you. Take advantage of that. Be a leader, not a follower. So it wasn't a complete shut you down. No. Where it it turned you off. No, not a complete. Not mm -hmm. a complete. Only when it came to school. Really? What do you mean by that? Well, that's why I was the biggest asshole. Oh, really though? Okay. So when it came to that, that's when it got to. That's what she kind of yeah, like. Sit your. What I say? What I say? What I say? I'm, what I say I'm gonna do? What I say I'm gonna do to you mm -hmm. when when I heard you do something else? Did I tell? What I say? Were you a kid that was? Always into something? Uh, extracurricular activities. Because mm -hmm. my mom didn't like me on the streets. Right. My brother did that. She made the mistake of letting him Get out come there. and go as he pleased. So she wasn't going to do that with me. So I was more of the, I was more of the, I got my eye on you, child. Mm -hmm. I'm not letting you out my sight. So she had me in everything. Name it, I did it. What What comes to mind when someone, or when I say Lil' Kev? Yeah. What comes to mind? Like, what's the first thing you, you, you think are the a collection of? The, the bastard. bastard. As soon as you say Lil' Kev, I think The Bastard. Why? Because that was my first stage name in yeah. comedy, Lil' Kev The Bastard. Lil' Kev The Bastard. Yep. Do you think with everything that you've done now, Kev, that we could sit down or you could sit on any talk show and they're saying, coming right now, you're going to go from the movie with The Rock, we yeah. got Lil' Kev The Bastard. Uh... I don't think it's appropriate. Right, right, right. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's uh, it's fitting, especially for this level of success and for the business that I'm now involved in and doing. I don't think a name like Lil Kev the Bastard is uh, is intriguing mm -hmm. um, or or professional right. to a certain degree. So so if it's a talk show, this is my first time on that show, and mm -hmm. the audience heard Lil Kev the Bastard. I don't know what you would expect to hear mm -hmm. in return, but I don't think that name matches up with my cadences and my persona today. Why? I'm so well-spoken. Yes, you are. It's yes, almost, you are. it's- You should've waited for me to say that compliment for you. Though. Oh, I mean, you are so well-spoken. Yeah, I didn't know if you, I didn't know if you were gonna no, say I, I wasn't gonna say it, I just wasn't gonna say it so early on. No, I'm sorry, cause you I know noticed it. I heard right, what right. I said, well, just, I was like, wow. But we, we sitting as close so we could do these too, the, the tap. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know okay, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Got so, it. But so well-spoken, Yeah, so well-spoken. Thank you, man. Did someone tell you to change your name from Lil' Kev the Bastard? Absolutely. Were you resist, like, was there resistance at of first? Of course. Lil' Kev the Bastard was killing. Mm -hmm. you, you sick in the head. You talking about change my name from the Bastard? Are you, like, what? I am the Bastard. <laughs> oh, what? Do you not see what they do when they hear Lil' Kev the Bastard? And it wasn't the, it was duh. Duh. The, the bastard. bastard, yeah. Uh, somebody... Straight just told me that's the stupidest fucking name they've ever heard. <laughs> and that I'm not giving people any understanding of who I am. Uh, people want to know who you are. People want to know about you. Giving them a short change version of your name mm -hmm. isn't what they come to shows for. They come to see a comedy show, but you can give them so much more. You can give them you. Make the decision to do that. It sounds genius now that we're sitting here, however fast forward years, but then when you had an identity and the identity works, yeah. it's gotta be hard for somebody to tell you that you can't move further than this or, or you're putting yourself in a box. Well, you know what though, it's not that it, it's not that it works. Mm -hmm. You know, what works is what you saw. So mm -hmm. for that world, right. I saw that, but there's a, bigger world. There's so many other doors and rooms that you can walk through that put you in a position to be seen by so many more. Why did you trust that person? I trusted that person because they seemed to know what they were talking about. They weren't the biggest name in comedy. They didn't do a lot, but they, they were given information that they didn't have to give. Mm -hmm. I felt that that moment came at the right time and I was supposed to listen to that person. I was supposed to meet that person. That random talk of comedy and what I should or shouldn't do came at a time when I was like, I'm going to trust that and believe that and follow those footsteps. What was it like growing up for you, Kev, as far as home life, brothers, sisters? Like, what was it like? Uh, one brother. Mm -hmm. You know, one brother. Dad wasn't really in there, you know, in and out, in jail, out of jail. I uh, had a bout with drugs. Mm -hmm. Mother, 
strict, very old fashioned. Um, put all the pressure on me as to what I'm going to do. And when I'm not, we butted heads. Eventually got to a place where I can only respect her mm -hmm. for being that individual, for being as hard as she was on me and for instilling the things that she did. Ultimately, my dad, even though he was in and out, still is my dad. There's still a high mm -hmm. amount of love there. And within that level of love that I have, I was able to pick out some small lessons that he did give. Mm -hmm. uh, all in all, my upbringing is one that was necessary. I was shaped and molded to be what I am today. So uh, I look at it and say it was exactly what it was supposed to be. How do you take that and not use that as the excuse for failure or something not going right? I think that when you talk about uh, excuses, yeah. when you talk about you know what can or what can't, uh, you're, you're setting yourself up and putting yourself in a position to already fail. Mm -hmm. I've never done that, never have. I don't believe in the what coulds or what mights. Right. I don't believe in the preparation for failure. Right. I believe in all eggs in this basket, let's go. I got no choices, I have no choice but to win. Now Where does I'm that one. come from, Kev? Mom. Yeah, what does your mother mean to you? Mother's everything. Mom's everything. It's my angel. Angel on my back, Nancy A. Hart. Mm -hmm. All bad that has happened to me has happened for a reason, and Nancy has helped me understand that within those reasons, all you're supposed to do is learn from them, move on, but move on to be better than what you were. It's that simple. When my mom passed away as well, and Kev, it's crazy because when my mom passed, I always felt like, and even to this day, that no matter who you have on, on earth, I have the best representative, the best manager, agent, sitting right next to God. Uh -huh. And there's times when I know she's like, you know what, give him a break here. Yeah. Or, you know, let, let, let him fall lightly. She done had some meetings. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, I can talk to you for a second. Yeah, exactly. That, that, my baby don't mean You know where his heart is at. He don't mean no You know. Man. You know that's a good man down there. Help him out on this one. Let's give him a pass. With, with so many people around you, man, and so many beautiful things, you're still able to... to be that guy that, that, that's not afraid to say, it came from my mom. Yeah. You know, and when I ask what does like your mom mean to you, with your mother not being here, how do you view that, that relationship with your, with your mother's present day? Um, it's, it's as good as it's ever been. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why is because I now have a raw, uncut vision mm -hmm. of what she was doing and the reason behind it. At the age 39, yeah, yeah. you get it. You go back and you look at everything that you did and that you went through, all the stuff that you thought that was BS, and you go, yeah. Dude, Kev, I had one of the moments driving home from work one day. I was in my car. And I don't know why, Kev, it just hit me and I start crying. And I was hey. like, now I understand. You know, and you got to think, Kevin, no matter what you have Like now, a thug tear or are you, are you? No, it was a real tear. <laughs> no, it was, yeah, yeah. Then like they're, they're snotty. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to think with, with so much that even with what we have, when you think about, you know, not, not being stripped of something, but in the physical form, do you ever get selfish enough where you say, man, I do so much for so many. I wish that I could do this for my mom. I wish she was still here. God. But no, do you get se the, the I, selfish? I'm going through a thing now where for the first time, I'm realizing how much I give. Very generous. How I much you give? give? Yeah. Give. I give a lot of me. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of me that's given to so many different people. Here, take, 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 mm -hmm. take, take. And in doing that, you realize, oh shit, what about me? Mm -hmm. Damn, the one person that always thought about me was my mom. Mm -hmm. That's one person who always you. Unconditionally, it was you. Granted, my wife and my kids, they think about me. 
But there's a difference because I'm still the provider. I'm still the caretaker. Granted, they're nurturers and they love, and that love is the reward. So you have to separate them. But everything else you that you give and give and give it, the one person that's always about you is your mother. So when you talk about her not being here, what do I wish? That's the biggest reward that I wish that I could give. Mm -hmm. I did so much for so many, but my mom passed away. Yeah. So on the brink of my success on the highest levels, I never got to give my mom any perks mm -hmm. from the good job that she did outside of, look at your boy, yeah. you see what you did, and it's me talking to my angel. I never had a physical Mom, yeah. go open up that door. Yeah. That's yours. Mom, all of this is for you. Mom, you got an island. I don't mm -hmm. know what I would do. I did something stupid for my mom. Mm -hmm. Stupid. Because I, I got a lot of money. Who? Because I got a lot of money. So I would have did something crazy. Because you have? A lot of money. I'm saying like I'm very to. successful. With being so given, how do you say no? People know you got money, people know you got this. The one thing you probably don't have is time, but you took the time to do this. Mm. How bad did you want to tell me no? I mean, honestly, mm -hmm. extremely bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't, it's not that I don't want to do it. Right. Because I do want to do it. Mm -hmm. But it's very hard for people to understand that you really don't have time. Like, the, the craziest thing is people not understanding, like, I really don't have time. I don't have time to take a shit. Yes. Like, I, I don't have time. So Same I'm, here. Man. I'm a busy guy. Same and I, here. And granted, yeah. granted, I like it. I like the hectic schedule that I create for myself. I like having to do the things that I do. I love it. That's how I operate. But the toughest thing in the world is for people on the outside that have no idea the level of go mm -hmm. and get that goes into this type of operation. So people that expect for you to be able to talk on the phone, mm -hmm. people that expect to get you and just have regular conversations, I don't, I don't have the time. But what happens, you get so good with saying the word no. Really? Because you don't, you don't care about the response. But how do you, you know, because I want to tell you, Kev, like, I give, I give, I give, I give. You know what I'm saying? I have a hard time. Sometimes saying no. I don't. How do you say no? No. No. Mm. Why? Because I don't want to. You don't have to explain it no. I don't, I'm, I'm almost 40 years old. No. Mm. No, I ain't got it. That's another thing that I hate. I can't stand when people count what you have. Yeah. Come on, man, I know you got it. You spirit. got it, Kev. Come on, man. I don't. You don't know what I got. Right. I'm, I'm, Isn't it more I'm of, I don't have deal it? deal with a space shuttle. Right, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. It's just more of an, it's, it's more of a, a expectation that I just don't like. Mm -hmm. I don't like that you expect me to be able to do something because of who I am and where I am. How do you pick and choose the people that are in your life? The same circle. Mm -hmm. I don't let new people in. That's the, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. It's not about who's in your life. It's about keeping the people that are in, in. Problems occur when you let new people in. Mm -hmm. And let new people penetrate the circle of the foundation. But just, I won't say recently, but you did have somebody that was next to you, mm -hmm. in a sense, that did you wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, does that make you tighten up even more so that... Of course, of course. I mean, look, you... The fuck the thing about reality, there's only two things in this world that can ruin, well, three, that can ruin any relationship or that can ruin any type of foundation. And that's drugs, mm -hmm. girls, and money. Mm -hmm. Those three things can take anything down. Those three things can bring the worst out of anybody if given the opportunity, if you're not dealing with a strong enough individual, mm -hmm. has the mental and mindset to maneuver and get around it. Uh, loyalty is an amazing word. Some have it, some don't. And those that do understand the perks that come from it. Trust, that's an amazing word. Mm -hmm. Some people have it, some people don't. Some people get it, those that do get the perks of being a trustworthy individual. 
within any relationships that you have, they're built on those things. They're built on a foundation of trust and loyalty. If those things get penetrated, mm -hmm. naturally, of course, you now raise an eyebrow to everything else around you. Right. But then you're living your life in somewhat of a fucking fair. Now you live your life. What you yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, what you yeah, got? yeah. What you, you, the terrorist you, mind state. You like even when things aren't going crazy or somebody's you tripping you there. Who that? Yeah. What they got phones over there. What they doing? Which I'm not. I'm not doing. How do you not be that guy when we live in a world now, Kev, where everybody wants to quick come up? Yeah. Everybody wants to see somebody go down for them to come up. It's in style. Yeah, very much so, and the, it's not going out of the style. The fashion today is seeing seeing who we can take down. Mm -hmm. That's what's cool. The new cool thing is fucking up lives. Yeah, man. Because you don't really realize that yeah. you're fucking up lives. What you realize is that, ah, ha, ha. Got him. It's the money. Ah, uh, dope. Mm -hmm. Shit funny as hell. Got him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah. ain't got no houses, no kids. How do, you move, how do you move on from, from I things go like home. that? Yeah. Bye. I'm in a house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to get me on my couch, right, Jack. Like, hey, I don't want no problems. Mm -hmm. it's, the climate and the temperature of our climate today is just different. But you know what? Sometimes you gotta, you gotta take so many steps backwards to make a big step forward. Mm -hmm. And I am a fan of social media. I right. embrace it, I love it. But it's also gotten to a point now where there is clearly a good and a bad side to it. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing a heavy part of the bad, a heavy, heavy part of the bad and it's not going to be until a bunch of people realize what the bad is yeah. that we decide to take a step forward. And whatever that step forward is, is going to be so much better than where we are now. But I think we still got to see a whole lot more. Because people are very destructive now, bro. Well, we're, we become robots. Mm -hmm. You become robots. You know, I, I went and I think I, uh, I forgot where I was. I was. I was coming out of a building and I saw it was like some some kids, it's like some teenagers, and they saw me, and they go, oh shit, Kevin Hart. And I was like, hey, what's up, man? I was like, oh! First thing they did was reach for the phone. Yes. Oh shit! Yo, 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 yo! So you're, you're talking to me, mm -hmm. but as you're talking to me, you're, you're talking to the camera while you talk to me. Mm -hmm. You don't even realize the moment of personal interaction is not even felt because you right. you wanted this right. so bad that you never got, what's up, man? How y'all doing? You mm. never got the genuine conversation part. People have skipped the genuine conversation. People have skipped the, hey, how you doing, man? Yeah. Oh my God, that's crazy, dude. I'm a fan mm. or whatever. Whatever that moment is, you skip past the people part and we go straight to the robot part. Mm -hmm. Hey man, I go, do you hear? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or or right automatically, here. sometimes they even fumble for it. Yeah, sometimes it just, just come up and you immediately gotta be that guy. But I have to look at both sides because I get it. Those moments are the important moments that now you gotta capture mm -hmm. because you want your, your profile, your page and everything to look. And so I get it. Mm -hmm. But there, there is no compromise anymore. There's no compromise. Where does your comedy come from, Kev? Life experiences. Yeah. My life experiences. Why, uh, why do you choose to share so much with, with your audience? Um, that's, my, that's my therapy. Mm -hmm. Have yeah. you ever been to a therapist? Fuck no. Right. <laughs> uh, my therapy is getting on stage, talking about my life and death, mm -hmm. the good, bad, Ugly. Mm -hmm. When I do that, I'm giving people an opportunity and a chance to relate, understand, and laugh. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I'm human. Right. This is showing you that I am a person. There's nothing that separates me from you other than the fact that I'm up here. And I'm on the stage. That. Right. That's it. How does your family feel about knowing anything that happened? You know, your son could be a part of this show. Mm -hmm. Your queen could be a part of this show. Your daughter. How do they feel when they're incorporated into the comedy, good, bad, and all? Um, well, you know, I mean, with them, I, it's always heavy on me. You mm -hmm. know, I uh, I try to keep it to where it's 
not heavy on them or something right. that could affect them in their day to day, you know, or just their thinking. I mean, because they're kids, but you know, these teenagers, man, Jesus Christ, my mm -hmm. daughter is so emotional. So I definitely gotta be careful what I say with her. She's just. Is she on social media as well? Yeah. Yeah, I just love to get an Instagram. Mm, how do you how do you be how do you stay parent enough and let them spread their wings enough? Because you gotta, everything is geared to take our kids away try, from us too. What you try to prevent will be what gotten you, yeah, regardless. Yeah, there is what no, you fear will appear. Yeah, like there's there is no ah, uh -uh, give me the, the, and <laughs> I'm gonna do the. They go to school and your friend got it. Let me see yeah, the phone. Yeah. Let me see. You're gonna get to it. So your best to be a part of it and just explain and make them understand. So on social media, you know, you go down a list of what you don't do, what you can't do, mm -hmm. what's got to be, what type of page you should have. If I ever see, you go through all of that. But once they out that door and they're on that other side, you just got to pray and hope yeah. that your parent is kicked in. Yeah. Because there's some shit going on out there. Mm -hmm. You just got to pray that your parents is kicked in. So that's why for me, the priority is dinner time with these kids. Right. Kev, you explained to me the way that you title your tours. Yeah. And it was so genius. Yeah. You know, and it's not like, oh, I'm gonna go do this because this is a great title. Yeah. But if you could just go through some of the titles, the titles? and how you ended up um, here. First, first one is uh, Grown Little Man. And I did that title because I felt like the biggest thing that everybody used to say is just talking about, you know, the height. Mm -hmm. A guy, he's so small, but it was a thing of me saying I'm grown. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was the small guy with grown responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Hence, I'm a grown little man. After grown little man, uh, I think I was like, people were questioning if that special was going to be the last version of what my funny was. That's funny, but can he do it again? Is he really that funny? So I named the next one Seriously Funny. Because, like, seriously, I'm funny. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not, it's not a joke, guys. I'm funny. Seriously. Look at me. Hello. Take me serious. I'm, I'm, I'm funny. Uh, after laughing and having a fucking ball, uh, of course, you need a little bit of turmoil. You need ups and downs, because that's what we all go through. I experience mine. So I titled the next one Laugh at My Pain. I still want you to come and have a good time, mm -hmm. but this is what I consider to be a painful time in my life. So you're laughing at some of the most hurt moments in my life. After laughing my pain, shit, I'm knocking them out, I'm killing. Fuck. Let me explain. Mm -hmm. Let me explain, King, when I was like, I think it was my first bout with anything like public. That was like when I was like the divorce and mm. when people were blowing the divorce out of proportion and that was when we were just going at it. So it was like, hey, let me explain, let me explain. why things are the way they are. After let me explain, I was like, what now? And I did it. Madison Square Garden, and I had the biggest tour ever. And I was like, what now? There's always got to be a question of what now, but then there's got to be an answer. My answer to what now was to get bigger, to get mm. better. What was yours? That's the question behind what now. That was for the world to ask themselves, what, what now? now? So there was a level of inspiration and motivation behind the title. After what now? Fuck, what am I going to call this next one? I don't know. I got to figure it out. Uh-oh. Dumbass Kevin does it again. Displayed the biggest act of irresponsible behavior on so many different levels in my life. Not just the shit I got caught up in, but on so many other levels, I was just irresponsible. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call it irresponsible. That's what I do. Whatever is going on at the time that can match up to my daily mm -hmm. and my mental, that's what the special should be about. With irresponsible, Kev, just going through when you say one of the biggest things in your life with, you know, getting caught up and most people would have disappeared. Mm -hmm. Most people would have said, I can't get back out there. I, I, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they would have just kind of imploded and people were 
that's what people, not for Kevin Hart, but that's an, an expectation. Mm -hmm. He ain't coming back from this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? How did you come back immediately? But I remember you were on the set and you were back on Instagram. And how did you, how were you able to not bounce back? But um, I'm, I'm a different, I'm a different mental human being. Mm -hmm. My level of mental tough is extremely high. Mm -hmm. uh, regardless of what I'm going through, the world is not going to stop. Mm -hmm. The world does not stop. The sun still has to shine in the morning. The moon comes out at night. You gotta wake up, gotta go to sleep. The days are going to they're gonna to continue to come. Uh, How do you toughen up your wife for that? Like that that's you in your bone you marrow and your DNA. You don't toughen up your wife, you you figure out what your foundation is mm -hmm. at that moment, you know? Mm -hmm. If we are till death do us part and that's what we decide to do, then this is a moment where we'll see right, this if, is this if if we are. If we are real and equipped to handle a tough situation, and this is the moment that we'll see. For me, it was owning up to it, mm -hmm. being man enough to talk about it, to talk to her about it, to take all of the repercussions that were coming my way and lay in the bed that I made for myself. When you do that, on her side, it was whatever decisions you decide to make, I support you, but make sure you make them. Don't let me or anybody else on the outside make a decision for you in your life. Mm -hmm. And Kevin, we've had many interviews and you've never come in and said, big, don't ask me about that. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this is a, this. even our last, in, one of our last interviews, I was even thinking like, man, I'm not, you know, I don't know if I'm going to go there with Kev. Kev is, you know, your personal friend as well. And you try to put a shield around some of the stuff. Like, I don't want to get a gotcha moment. Like, oh, we got it. You know what I'm saying? I want a relationship. Yeah. And we spoke. But you've never said, don't, don't ask me that. Kev, do you ever feel like, or have you ever felt like just giving up? Like anything got dark enough for you where you're like, I'm throwing this away? No. No. No, it's absurd. It's ridiculous. I thought that was a great question to you. No, maybe somebody else said that to me. Mm -hmm. Too much shit to do, man. I'm on the road to, to doing a lot of shit. I'm only mm -hmm. 39. 39 years old, man. Why do you work? Why do you work so hard, Kev? You know what I'm saying? Like, so when I tap out, I can really tap out. It's all about my book. Mm -hmm. What am I putting in my book? Your life is a book. Everything you do goes into a chapter. How do you want that book to end? Mm -hmm. You want to have a book that people love to read over and over again because they can't believe how you did it, how you laid mm -hmm. it all out. Oh, my God, so much in here. So many historic moments in this book. So many pictures, so many freeze frames, so many remember the times are in this book. And I notice if I'm, if I'm not getting the hashtag right, but comedic rock star shit. Yeah. What does that mean to you? Like when I see that hashtag in your, in your social media. The definition behind comedic rock star shit is very simple. It is rock and roll is big. Mm -hmm because there was a time where people felt like rock and roll is what brought people closer together. Mm -hmm. you look at some of the biggest festivals in the world that involve rock and roll. 50,000 people, 80,000 people, 100,000 people. These were big, huge. Rock and roll makes people great, makes people feel good, makes people better. Within comedy, comedy does the same thing. How do I merge comedy and rock and roll, I become bigger than rock and roll. Hence the term comedic rock star shit. So coming to see me and coming to laugh ultimately is serving a major purpose, which is bringing everyone closer together through the laughter that I'm providing. <laughs> Are you addicted to that, that roar, that laughter? No, not mm -hmm. addicted. Uh, I love the fact that I keep pushing 
myself and keep raising a new bar for me. I'm addicted to that. I'm addicted to competing against myself and finding new levels to beat me. Mm -hmm. Yes. To and you're in competition with yourself. Yes. 100%. What do you do if you do say, okay, I want to I wanna relax today. I want to go on vacation. How do you slow down or how do you put something on pause? Do you, do you ever? What do you do? I mean, we definitely go on vacations. Mm -hmm. Vacations are always good. Uh, home, is, home is good for me. Are you home? No. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. When I am, when I am, that's good. Home with the kids, chilling. I mean, I do, I do prioritize. Like right. my, I have my days during the week where I'm home, no matter what, because mm -hmm. I see my kids. I'm very much in my kids' lives. But when you home, you don't have to get home and say, "Oh, let's go." Like home, you you'll be fine with just. Yeah. What about when you're out with your family? Can you still be Kevin Hart with the people as far as like somebody come up and ask I you for a off. picture? I shut off. I'm with the kids. I shut it off. Really? Yeah. You know, how, how would you say if I came up and said, oh, can I get a picture with you? I'm sorry, man. I'm with my kids. Right. I shut it down when I'm with the kids. And then that's when I say, fuck you. You wouldn't be shit if it wasn't yeah, for me. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you, buddy. <laughs> you, you ain't nothing. Good you know what I'm saying? Okay. Good for you, man. I right. appreciate but do people respect when you say uh, that? It depends on where you at. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> where you at giving out the information? There's two different, there's two different answers that you'll get. Mm. Most of the time, I don't get much back. People right. understand that. Right, like, I hear you. I'm sorry. I can say hi. Yeah, yeah. How you doing? But Give them that. I'm with the kids. I don't, I don't do the pictures and stuff when I'm with the kids. Mm. With such a platform, Kev, and when I did ask, like, how do you choose your comedy? I noticed that you don't really go on that political side where it's like, oh, F Donald Trump, 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 Trump. No. Why not? With Division. such a platform. Say it again. Division. You're dividing your audience. Mm -hmm. You're going to have some people that support this, some people that support that. Right. So now in this environment, I'm taking out a feel-good moment to make it a mm -hmm. moment of division. Because hating Trump is extremely popular. Well, and some yeah. people would think like, oh, I'll just get up there and you're gonna you hear know. it. I mean, you. you but that's not you. No, it's not. That's not. That's not me. Mm -hmm. If I say it, you're not even believing the political warfare that I'm coming with because that's not <laughs> me. That's not authentic to what I do. Mm -hmm. Am I a supporter? Fuck no. I don't, right. I don't have to say that. I know I'm not. I mean, people know I'm not. I don't. I don't say that. You've never seen me dig into politics through mm -hmm. stand-up comedy. It's not my style of comedy. Do people think you're supposed to? Have you gotten I don't, I don't know what people think. Right. I don't, I don't concern myself. Right, yeah. Hey, what do y'all think? <laughs> I don't, that's, why, that's why they're people. People are entitled to have opinions and thoughts. Mm -hmm. But that's not, that's not what I do. And when you Kathy do... Kathy Griffin's comment, I think she was like, if you want to go to a, a, a show and not, not hear about what's going on in the world. Oh, go yeah. To go to Hart Kevin Hart's show. show. I was like, right. I don't know. I don't know what that was. Right. That didn't get you up the next night and say, oh, I got to say something I, about. I don't know what the point of that was, but mm -hmm. I don't know what you want. How do you handle the so-called darts or things that's thrown from fellow comedians as well? Uh, you give them more stuff to throw darts and mm -hmm. be angry about. More of a target. Like, I'm getting bigger and bigger. And well, you only you got to think. The, the anger and the hate only comes from a place of envy. You only hate what you can't have or do mm -hmm. or achieve. Those that can't hate. It's one of the most realest sayings in the world. Mm -hmm. Those that can't hate. I can't stand fucking LeBron James. Right. Why? He's fucking great. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. Why? Yeah. What's your real reason for like, you would never see Beyonce say something like, oh, that's such a, that never, bitch. Never. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Never. I don't like Beyonce. I'm off it. Why? Why? It's Beyonce. How do you, how do you choose your comedy and what do you kind of, and not just politics, but how do you, what do you stay away from? Like, I'm not. What uh, I stay away from? Uh, things that don't pertain to me in mm -hmm. my life. I'm on stage talking about my life. Now, if there is an encounter between me and said politician that caused me to react so like this, and I did this right. in return, and this story would be great on stage. Did I tell it? Then it's yours. Yes. I would, it has to be a moment. All of my stuff is self-involved. It's all, it's all spearheaded from a place that is actually, re, I guess you could say, real and close to my life. These mm -hmm. are things and moments that have happened. These are things that I do. 
It's me, my family, my kids. We travel, we go. I'm getting older. What's the consequences of me getting older? I'm working on a joke right now about me buying a, a fucking brick oven pizza <laughs> because Seinfeld told me I had to have one. Like the oven oven? Brick oven pizza. And I went and got this pizza. Ain't nobody ate from this goddamn pizza. Yeah, but, but you got it, though. But Seinfeld made me get it as if this was going to be a big hit. How do you stay away Black from those Joneses? Yeah, how do you stay away from the like, like the gotta haves? I got, I gotta have, I gotta have. What's the? And, you gotta get, you gotta get, you gotta get a nice number of gotta haves to realize you don't gotta have it. Right. It's not until you have it that you go and waste my money. On Is there anything that you looked at in your past that you said, "Dude, why did I buy that?" Or how, um, why, why did I spend that much? Yeah, it's a lot of that shit. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I got a lot of that. But as you get older, you get smarter. So it's more about the value in what you have and what it holds and what it means. So there's significant value to the material items that I have from moments in my life or things that have happened in my career and I can match said thing mm -hmm. up with that. If you could have, and not, oh, I'm going to a comedy show, but if you could have dinner or sit down with any comedian, dead or alive, past, present, just to sit there and have a moment with, who, who would it be? I have them to date. Mm -hmm. I mean, me and Rock, our mm -hmm. conversations are epic. Dave and Chappelle mm -hmm. are, ugh. Dave's a genius. He's yeah. just talking to him. Dave's never not funny. One of the best dinners I, that we've been to were the dinner with me, Dave, Chris, Eddie. Uh, Chris Tucker was there. <sighs> Yeah, I remember. Uh, Gang that was over at the, uh, what was that? That was the, uh, <laughs> man, because I remember, cause Jose, you remember, I was like, man, because I was in uh, Vegas. Yeah, yeah. And you was like, big, you got to come out to this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Was my presence missed? Yeah. Yeah, course. okay. Thank you, brother. Of course. No, everybody was talking about that. <laughs> oh, you know, I was everybody out with was the conversation. About. No, that was one of the best. But I, I, I just like, I love conversation. I love mm -hmm. good conversation. Do you continue to learn? Fuck okay. yeah. Students, you're mm -hmm. a sponge. The day you stop being a sponge and soaking up information, the day you're dead, you're done. Mm -hmm. The dumbest guy in the room is the guy that thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. Mm -hmm. You're a dummy. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, you should put me in my place. You know? is, is, if, if you were to say the book, you say the book, what's the legacy? The legacy. Like, if, if, and not that, oh, he's gone, but what, what would you want people when it's all to say? Said and when it's done, all said and done, your way. When all said and done, I am going to be a guy that had a major impact on the world that used laughter as my elevator to get me to the top to do what can be considered groundbreaking life-changing things for others. Mm -hmm. The give back is, is already been, I've already been doing it, but there's a strategic plan to what it is that you want to do and a change that you really want to make. Somebody sent Oprah a message one day on social media and I saw it and it was like, yo, when you gonna start doing some shit? Just some negative. <laughs> Oprah, when you gonna do something? For the, for the, for right. the people. And Oprah was like, I've sent over. 700 kids to college. What have you done? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when she said it, she didn't have to say it, but that was like an impact that Oprah realized that she had. Like, that's a fucking number. 700 mm -hmm. kids. Four. That you've sent to college, like on a full ride. I was like, it's unreal. So I want to follow suit. What has Kevin Hart done? What can I attach myself to? What so this changed? isn't just about you no. and having the most toys or the most mileage no. on a plane or no, anything? No, 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 no. Uh, I think that for, for me, it's about the legacy of Gid as well. You know, like it's, if you go look at my network, the Laugh Out Loud network, that network mm -hmm. was built to provide opportunities for the younger generation right. of comedy. That younger generation of female comedians, male comedians that are coming up. Here's a platform for you to go and embrace and for you to win on. That platform Why not be you. selfish? Why not be and selfish? It just be me, 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 my, my, my. I don't want that. I don't want the crabs in the barrel. I don't want to, I don't like people holding other people back. 
Mm-hmm. There's enough room and money out here for everybody if we all realize it. There's enough room for everybody to be happy and everybody to succeed. But people don't realize that. So many people want to keep it for themselves. Mm-hmm. No, I, mean, I ain't the Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't telling you where I got these pants from. Right. Yeah. So you can go. Remember when everybody's pants. shoes came from New York? Where you get them shoes? New hey, York. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. You, oh, you, you, want taste, you can go get some. <laughs> Not I'm at all. Like that. I'm not like that at all. Ken, we did Soul Plane together. Yes, we did. And then we did um, MTV. Like, you were the host yeah. and it was judging. So let me rap Superstar. I kind of been in the same place since then. Well, um, I mean, it's not. It's not. How did you take off? From where, from where we were. From where we were at um, the same time. Uh, I just wanted some other stuff. Right. But I want other stuff. You're probably just working hard and different. It's not like you look better than me. So yeah. it's not like it's yeah. a yeah, I think it's, it's a look thing, right? Well, you know. I mean, I mean, the cameras are on. <laughs> People can see that yeah. you don't look better than me. But we're not here to talk yeah. about that. Yeah. You, it, the, it, we, this is off air, not off limits. Yeah, got it. Got but, it. Um, got it. but what do you think it is? I got lucky. Yeah, that's what yeah. I tell myself. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I told you. I told you. Yeah. They did I, yeah. yeah. I was like, dude, that is one lucky, lucky bastard. Yeah, man. that's what it is. It's right. Like, but you did take that luck. Yes. And you did something with it, Kev. You did oh, something. I got, I got lucky, lucky. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, everybody can't get lucky, lucky. It's all that. Yeah. And the luck continues, yeah, man. Just, I just keep getting. Lucky. Wait till you start working with it too, man. You know what I'm saying? When you get off the luck and actually start putting some work yeah, once in. Once I put some energy and effort into it, then it's gonna be different. Kev, you got you're in so many different places, man. I yeah. pop on CBS, you know. <laughs> you're on CBS, you know. I pop on my satellite, you're on Laugh Out Loud. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We go to the movies, you got some of the biggest box office movies, yeah. man. Like when we say A-list and superstar. Mm-hmm. And we can't put you in a box. I can't say, you can't say Kevin Hart, the comedian. Mm -hmm. You just say Kevin Hart. Kev, man, uh, thank you for being off air with me, brother. Thank you, man. It is a pleasure to see you, pleasure to sit down with you, man. And like I say, Kev, like, I'm a fan as well. Um, I'm inspired by what you do, man. And I constantly tell my team as well, man, that we're not working hard enough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if, if it's not harder, smarter. Mm-hmm. And I really look at what your career is, bro, and mm-hmm. the things that you do. And Kev, I recognize it, man, and continue to work hard. I, I thank you. you for always being available, bro. I'm going to give you my time because mm-hmm. you deserve the time because you were there for me, like I told you before, before it got to where it is. Isn't a lot of people forget that, too, though. Kev. A lot of people do. And then plus, you know, there's sometimes when, I, you know, and I probably reminded you over the years, too. We were like, hey, remember who got you there? <laughs> you well, know what I'm saying? Well, no, I don't think, I don't think you need to. Oh, oh, okay. Neither, so was it was, was it tacky when I would say, "Hey, you know, you wouldn't have been a shit without bit. me." That right. Way, it's a, it's a but I apologize. Tacky, but here's what I want you to understand, man. Everybody can't be a star. They can't. If everybody was a star, then a star wouldn't be special. Mm-hmm. Only some stars shine. Mm-hmm. When you look up there in the sky, the rest of them are dull. They're fucking. Doll and the rest of them are uh, twinkle. This. They're just a, it's just a, what is that? Now this. So I say that to say. I ain't shit. You shouldn't feel bad. Oh, for not being shit. For not, you know what I'm saying? For because, not being as successful. Well, you're like one of the, like if I look up at the sky, mm-hmm. right? Right. Uh, you, you see the one star. Right, that's like, you. Oh, shit. Oh, that's shit. you. Is that one star you? There it is. That's okay. Kevin. That's Kevin Hart. Okay. And then you got. Then you got that other stuff that you're like, is that a star? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that? What is Are that? Are you? He looks familiar. Yeah, Aren't you? What, I know you what? from somewhere. I'm sorry. What, you did what? Yeah, yeah. That's not bad to be that. That's not bad. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's not, that's not what you. It feel kind of bad, though. No, what you're doing is not bad. Right. It's, like, it's just not great. Everybody can't. Be great. great. All right. Okay. Well. Right. I'm gonna end it right there, man. Because yeah, someone's getting a, disrespectful. That's, uh, a, that's a positive Kev. way to get out of here. Yeah. Good for you, man. That's a positive. <laughs> yeah. that's right. Well, note. thank you for being off air with me, man. Send me Nike and Tommy John. Uh-uh. <laughs> you know?